do you invite the whole city to be part of the good news of Jesus in overlooked places? I wasn't a disciple growing up. I didn't know what a disciple was. Uh, my wife wasn't a disciple. She grew up in church. And, and we knew that making disciples would draw us close to God. Uh, our first disciples were second generation immigrants and people who just lived in the neighborhood and city. Recently, through our Discovery Bible Studies, we baptized eight people. We started a group, we started a training called Praxis and Pillar that trains people to make disciples and start small group development. I co-founded a conversation called the Black Missional Convening that actually founded 100 black missional leaders across the U.S., we equip women as missional leaders and walk alongside them as they begin to plant our churches. If you can't tell, I'm pretty passionate about disciple making. And in under-resourced communities, the gospel has to be fulfilled through restoration and redemption. See, we see community development as one of the hugest parts of disciple making that brings human flourishing. Faith City Church Networks believes disciple making happens best through missional communities. We embrace the global call through, human de uh, through community development and human flourishing. We want empowering communities through missional and micro businesses with disciple making movement principles. Hi, I'm Carl. <laughs> I'm from Faith City Church Network. I founded Faith City in 2016 in the Midwest city of St. Paul. I used to be a black Muslim. I've been arrested six times. I was addicted to drugs and alcohol for 21 years of my life. And God found me actually passed out drunk in front of First Orlando Baptist in 2012. I was put in the ambulance and I was told I was close to death. And I remember entering a Christian recovery program and meeting Jesus. And that's when I first heard about this discipleship. And my, my great uncle Hector, he was a church planner. I'd never heard about him before until I became a Christian. And he planted three churches between Georgia and Florida. This emboldened me to see what this was all about. I was drawn to church planting. See, I came to Expo the first time in 2012. And I served in St. Louis, Missouri. I even worked with Joyce Myers Ministry, her dream center. Then I moved to Ohio where I was developed to start to plant churches and develop to preach and teach. I met my wife in 2012. We were married in 2014. We have three beautiful children, Keegan, Naomi, Kenya, and a beautiful great Dane, Thor the Magnificent. In 2015, we prayed about a diverse, disciple-making community impacting the world through community development and human flourishing. We parachute planted into St. Paul, launched Easter of 2019 while opening storehouse grocers and coffee. Our project is empowering individuals and communities with missional and micro businesses using disciple-making principles to foster sustainable growth, and positive impact. My wife asked if you will understand that. She said, that's a mouthful. <laughs> what we actually do is we operate grocery, micro grocery and coffee shops with paid workforce development with young adults. And they are missional communities that reach urban poor, families living paycheck to paycheck. And to us, micro means businesses with less than 10 workers, and 2,500 square feet or less. They are worker-owned cooperatives. That means they're not, I'm not the CEO, I'm just a partner. And that means that we create community and decision-making within the city. A story that impacted me was a, a guy named Eric met at one of our community dinners. And Eric had just moved from Philadelphia. And, and we had just shared the gospel with him at one of our, we, we used to do dinner church. And Eric became homeless immediately after that conversation. So my bright idea was to move him and his two kids into my house. <laughs> and as we were doing that, we were able to disciple him. Eric joined our launch team, has been a part of our church for the past like six years. Eric life changed. He got his own place to live. 
he got a car, his kids are going to a private school, and he asked me to baptize his whole family. This year, he asked me to open up a food truck with him. See, our network works through many ports. And grocery stores and coffee shops, missional communities, uh, community development, starting new micro enterprises, employing and reaching people in new neighborhoods. We believe scaling micro enterprises will create staffing and community issue, uh, plans that will change the church forever. And the reason that we do this is through cooperative. And the cooperative work we do is scaling. We are actively scaling Storehouse Grocer. This year we'll have two more units opening up by the end of this year and five units by the end of 2025. Every unit will have a missional leader and build a network of churches. Imagine with me, multiple ways of making disciples that find good news with micro enterprises working together to see others flourish. Imagine a redeeming movement that calls overlooked innovators to develop leaders for the next generation. Imagine a disciple-making movement that doesn't end, but sparks movement in multiple sectors and cities across the U.S. and the globe. Thank you.